Russia launched a missile attack on Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, this morning. At least 10 people were injured, while residential buildings and industrial facilities were damaged. The attack came after U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan made an unannounced visit to Kyiv. It, was, it is the first large-scale attack on Ukraine's capital city in recent weeks. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has arrived in Egypt. He is scheduled to meet with representatives from Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Jordan and the United Arab Emirates. This is to secure a ceasefire deal in the Israel-Hamas war. Yesterday, Blinken also met with Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince, uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in the port city of Jeddah. Three people were killed after an airstrike hit a car in the occupied West Bank city of Jenin. The Israeli attack also left one wounded. CCTV footage showed the car going up in flames after being attacked. The Israeli military has said that at least two of the four people inside the vehicle belong to the terrorist group the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. In Haiti, armed gangs have launched new attacks in the suburbs of the capital city, Port-au-Prince. This comes as Haiti is reeling under escalating gang violence. In recent weeks, gunmen have set fire to police stations, forced the closure of Haiti's main international airport, and stormed the country's two biggest prisons. Meanwhile, the U.S. has said that it will start evacuating its citizens out of Haiti by helicopter. British Defence Minister Grant Shapps met his Australian counterpart Richard Marles today. The two countries have signed a new defence and security cooperation agreement. Under this, Australia and the UK have agreed to consult each other if they come under threat. The leaders said that the treaty will strengthen the ability of the British and Australian militaries to work together. Ireland's Prime Minister Leo Varadkar has unexpectedly stepped down from his position. In a news conference, Varadkar said that there was no real reason for his sudden departure. He said, and I quote, I have nothing else lined up, I have nothing in mind, I have no definite personal or political plans. Prabowo Subianto has formally been confirmed as Indonesia's next president. This was after he gained a resounding majority in February's election with nearly 60% of the votes to his name. However, his rivals have refused to concede. Losing candidate Anis Baswedan has filed a legal case challenging the outcome. China has asked Western nations to stop smearing Hong Kong's new national security law. Beijing said it firmly opposed countries and institutions that slandered the new law. Yesterday, Hong Kong lawmakers unanimously passed the law called Article 23. Following this, the US and the UK expressed concerns, saying the law threatens the rights and freedom of people in Hong Kong. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has postponed his visit to Bhutan. This is due to severe weather conditions over Bhutan's Paro Airport. He was supposed to depart for a two-day visit to the country today, but now officials say that new dates for his visit are being worked out. Pakistan's Gwadar port was attacked by armed gunmen yesterday. The assailants entered the Port Authority complex and opened fire on security officials. This has resulted in the death of two Pakistani soldiers. All of the eight gunmen were also killed. The Majid Brigade, the armed wing of the Balochistan Liberation Army, claimed responsibility for the attack. Meanwhile, 12 people were killed in an explosion at a coal mine in Pakistan's Balochistan region. Eight others were rescued and taken to a hospital. An official said that 20 people were inside the mine when methane gas exploded. Mine workers have long complained of a lack of safety gear and poor working conditions. They say that these are the key causes of frequent accidents at the mines. A wooden boat carrying dozens of Rohingya Muslims capsized off Indonesia's coast yesterday. Following this, an Indonesian search team launched a rescue operation. Rescue workers pulled out survivors who had been standing on the boat's hull for safety. 
South Korea has said that it will start suspending the licenses of striking doctors from next week. This is for violating the government's back-to-work order. Doctors in the country have been on strike for over a month. They've been protesting the South Korean government's decision to hike medical school admissions by 2,000 seats. In climate news, heavy rains in Bolivia caused a river to overflow in the capital La Paz today. The overflowing river flooded the streets, partially destroying an overpass and nearby cars. Authorities say floods have led to dozens of evacuations and extensive damage to infrastructure. Bolivia has seen record-breaking rainfall since February this year. Meanwhile, flooding, landslides and torrential rains have killed at least 23 people in Papua New Guinea. The head of the country's National Disaster Center, Lucette Mann, has said that 23 people were buried in three separate landslides in different parts of the Simbu province this week. He added that the heavy rains and floods have caused extensive damage in the country's highland and coastal regions. The United Arab Emirates, Azerbaijan and Brazil have signed a pledge to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. The countries aim to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. This comes as Azerbaijan readies itself to host this year's COP summit, followed by Brazil in 2025. Russian climate specialists have launched a monitoring mission in the Arctic region. The mission is being led by the Russian Arctic and Antarctic Research Institute. It will focus on monitoring the thermal balance of glaciers. The mission is expected to last until October 2024. The world produced a whopping 62 million tons of electronic waste in 2022. This is according to a new report by the United Nations. This includes discarded devices like mobile phones, TVs and microwave ovens, among other things. As per the report, this number is projected to rise to 82 million tons by 2030. Greenhouse gas emissions from the world's top fossil fuel companies could have a catastrophic effect on the planet. It may lead to more than 11.5 million deaths by the year 2100. This is according to a new report by a non-governmental organization called Global Witness. The report anal analysis combined emissions from fossil fuels produced by the top uh, five top oil firms. This includes companies like Shell, BP, Total Energies, ExxonMobil and Chevron. The U.S. has lowered its goal for the adoption of electric vehicles. Earlier, the country was targeting a sh to shift 67% uh, of all cars to EVs by 2032. This goal has now been reduced to 35%. This comes after the government faced opposition from the auto industry and workers. On to business and tech news. The US Federal Reserve has decided to keep its interest rate unchanged. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said that the central bank is waiting for more signs of decline in inflation before they start to lower the rates. However, Powell has also said that he expects three rate cuts by the end of this year. UK banking giant Barclays is reportedly preparing to cut hundreds of jobs. Job cuts will primarily impact its investment banking unit. As per the reports, the firm is expected to begin laying off employees in the coming months. Last year, the bank slashed around 5,000 jobs as part of a major cost-cutting drive. U.S. firm Apollo Global has reportedly proposed to buy Paramount Global's studio business for $11 billion. The deal will require Paramount Global to break off its film and television studios uh, from the rest of the firm. This comes after the firm suffered heavy losses due to a slowdown in the entertainment sector. Paramount Global has also received takeover offers from Skydance Media and Redbird Capital Partners. Carmaker Mercedes-Benz will recall more than 160,000 vehicles in the U.S. This is according to the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The agency has said that vehicles are being recalled due to an improperly secured 48-volt ground connection. The loose connection increases the risk of a potential fire in cars. 
semiconductor giant Intel has announced plans to invest $100 billion in four U.S. states. The fund will be used to increase the firm's manufacturing capabilities in the country. Intel has said that a large part of this investment will go to the state of Ohio. Intel plans to build the world's largest artificial intelligence chip manufacturing site in the state. Meanwhile, Intel received around $19 billion in subsidies from the U.S. government. This includes a $8.5 billion grant and up to $11 billion in additional funds. The firm has said that these funds will be used to build new factories in the U.S. These subsidies are part of the U.S. government's plan to boost chip production in the country. America's communications regulator is investigating Amazon for alleged uh, marketing and selling of illegal electronic devices. The Federal Communications Commission has said that it is probing uh, if Amazon sold equipment without proper authorization. It was earlier reported that some online retailers were selling radio frequency jammers. U.S. federal law pro prohibits such devices from being sold in the country. According to reports, the U.S. Department of Justice is preparing to file a lawsuit against tech giant Apple. It has accused the firm of violating the country's competition laws. Apple has been accused of blocking competitors from accessing some hardware and software features on its phones. Meanwhile, Apple is facing another challenge from several U.S. tech firms. Meta Platforms, Microsoft, Elon Musk's X and Match Group have joined Epic Games' case against the iPhone maker. The firms have accused Apple of violating a 2021 court order. The order mandated Apple to allow developers to add alternative payment options on their iPhones. The, they claim that Apple is making it challenging for iPhone users to access cheaper payment alternatives. France's competition watchdog has slapped more than $270 million in fines on a tech giant Google. Google has been fined for failing to negotiate a framework with French publishers. This is uh, to use their content on its website. Since 2020, Google has been in talks with French publishers to come up with a way to pay them for their content. Moving to sports, in cricket, the IPL franchise Chennai Super Kings will begin their title defence tomorrow against Royal Challengers Bengaluru. All eyes are on CSK captain Mahindra Singh Dhoni, who will, who will reportedly be playing his final year at the tournament. The 42-year-old helmed the team last season to their fifth title. Former CSK batter Suresh Raina suggested that Dhutraj Gaikwad will be a good replacement for Dhoni. Cricket legends Chris Gale and Ali Khan lit up the uh, Empire State Building in New York to promote the upcoming T20 World Cup. They had the honor of pulling the lever down to light up the iconic building in navy and pink, which are the official colors of the Grand Tournament. The ninth edition of the Men's T20 World Cup begins on the 1st of June. Australian cricketer Elise Perry broke the record for most appearances for Australia in the 50-over format. She achieved this feat as uh, the Australian women's cricket team took on Bangladesh in the first of three ODIs. The, that was Perry's 145th ODI where she passed Alex Blackwell's record. Perry has 3,896 runs in the 50-over format, including two centuries and 34 half-centuries. In football, Palestinian Football Association, or PFA, has called on football's international governing body, FIFA, to impose sanctions on Israeli teams because of the country's offensive in Gaza. The PFA asked for its proposal to be on the agenda at FIFA's upcoming Congress. Israel's Football Association responded by saying it has always adhered to FIFA's regulations. Ex-Brazilian footballer Danny Alves will be freed from jail today. A Spanish court has granted Alves a 11.1, um, sorry, a 1.1 million dollar bail after his rape conviction. The former Barcelona defender has been held in prison since January 2023. This year, in February, he was convicted of raping a woman in a nightclub in Spain in 2022. In tennis, women's world number two Arena Sabalenka opened up on her ex-boyfriend's tragic death. Sabalenka's former boyfriend, a former ice hockey player, Konstantin Kulstov, 
uh, died by suicide. She posted the story on her Instagram account in her first comment or since the suicide. Sabalenka described it as an unthinkable tragedy. The two were first linked in June 2021, but were no longer together when this incident took place. The principal body for women's professional tennis, called the WTA, or the Women's Tennis Association, has begun a review of its rules involving players cleared of doping offences. The potential changes include special rankings for players who return to court after a ban or if their ban is reduced. This comes against the backdrop of the high-profile case of Simona Halep, who just returned to tennis after her ban was reduced. In badminton, ace Indian shuttler P.V. Sindhu cruised into the pre-quarterfinals of the Swiss Open Badminton uh, 2024. She beat Thailand's uh, porn pitcher uh, Choe Kiwong 21-12, 21-13 in straight games. Sindhu finished the match in just 34 minutes. The Indian next faces Japan's 17-year-old sensation Tomoko Miyazaki. The draw for this year's men's Olympic football tournament has been announced. Hosts France are in Group 1 and will play the first game of the tournament against the United States on the 24th of July. The match takes place two days before the opening ceremony. World Boxing is aiming to replace the current International Boxing Association for the 2028 Los Angeles Olympics. The IOC stripped the Russia-led IBA last June after it failed to complete reforms on governance, finance and ethical issues. World Boxing will seek recognition from the International Bo Olympics Committee for this change. The goal is to keep boxing in the Olympics program as the board tackles these challenges. In entertainment news, Sophie Turner has filed a petition requesting that that a judge uh, reactivate her divorce case with her ex-husband Joe Jonas. This uh, is according to court documents cited in media reports. Turner's legal team moved a Florida judge uh, citing an end of an abatement period. Sophie jo uh, Turner and Joe Jonas announced a separation in September 2023. The divorce between American singer Ariana Grande and Dalton Gomez is now official. A Los Angeles court dissolved their marriage of nearly three years. Under the settlement, Grande will take a one-time payment of uh, will make a one-time payment of $1.25 million to Gomez. The two had separated more than a year ago, according to court papers. Pop star Shakira opened up a uh, on being a single mom during an interview. She reflected on her breakup with former Spanish footballer Gerard Piquet, who she dated for, who she was with for 11 years. The Latin pop star said that it's not good to have a husband since it was dragging her down. Shakira believes her music career has thrived after parting ways. Ten recordings were inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame yesterday. Guns N' Roses' uh, debut studio album, Appetite for Destruction, was among the several uh, other inductees. Lauren Hill's uh, Miseducation of Lauren Hill was, will also be added to the list. This year's class will be saluted at the Grammy Museum's inaugural Grammy Hall of Fame Gala and concert on May 21st in Los Angeles. The romantic comedy Anyone But You, starring Sidney Sweeney and Glenn Powell, will soon be streaming on Netflix. It will be available on the OTT platform uh, from April 23rd. The film was orig originally released around Christmas last year. The film uh, grossed over $200 million worldwide, exceeding its $25 million budget. The makers of the House of Dragons unveil, unveiled six new posters ahead of a trailer launch. They were posted on the official uh, Twitter account of the House of Dragons page. The posters uh, featured eight actors, including Matt Smith as a Prince Daemon Targaryen, Emma Darcy as Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen. Uh, the trailer for season two is expected to debut today. Creators of the hit fantasy drama series Game of Thrones, uh, David Benioff and D.B. Wise, are back to television with another sci-fi thriller called Three-Body Problem. 
The series is a rendition of the first book of a best-selling trilogy, also called The Three-Body Problem. It stars uh, John Bradley, who played Samuel Tarly in Game of Thrones. Sing songwriting duo uh, Elton John and Bernie Taupin were conferred with the Gershwin Prize. The two legendary singers were celebrated for their unforgettable contributions to popular music. In the event in Washington, D.C. saw an array of performers who all honored the duo. Actor and singer Billy Porter discussed the duo's impact on his career. M. Emmett uh, Walsh, the actor who featured in uh, films like Blade Runner, Knives Out and The Bo Blood Sim uh, Sample, has died at the age of 88. Walsh's uh, manager confirmed uh, it saying he died on the 19th of March. The actor uh, passed away due to a ca uh, cardiac arrest at a hospital in the US state of Vermont. Walsh has appeared in more than 220 roles across seven decades. All-female Korean uh, K-pop act Espa will uh, release uh, its uh, first concert film, Espa World Tour in Cinemas, from uh, next month. The concert movie will be a 125-minute feature. It will include behind-the-scenes interviews with the girl group, solo performances by the members, and more. Tickets for the film will go on sale later this month. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.